NFL Daily is presented today by Manscaped, the makers of the best men's grooming products on the internet, including the Ultra Premium Collection, which we'll tell you all about later on in today's show as we continue the draft coverage here at Chat Sports. Today's video is the top 20 undrafted free agents and where they've signed if they have signed. So this is based on my own personal big board, just the top available players left beginning with a guy at a fourth round grade on Kellen Deesh out of Arizona State, much to the delight of producer Jack Lauderay. He is older, uh, 25 in week one. He's a weird tweener of a super tall guy with 32-inch arms, so is he a guard length but tackle size, penalties on there? I'm not sure why he didn't get drafted. Uh, he's a really good athlete, so in general that means there's an undisclosed medical, something unknown off the field or whatever, I would wager that's what happened with Kellen Deesh. A great pickup, as far as I'm concerned, by the Miami Dolphins. Do not be shocked if he ends up making that 53-man roster. JoJo Doman, who again is kind of a, a tweener here for me, also had a fourth-round grade on him, number 117 overall on my board. 25 years old as a rookie, that is older there. The coverage value is intriguing uh, to me. I, I thought he was being overlooked. I do think I was higher on Doman. Uh, than most people, does have some knee issues in that left ACL. He tore it like seven months apart. Uh, so that might have been the red flag that caused him to go if they're, if teams are worried about that left knee. But he's a good athlete despite being undersized, 6'1", 228. The Colts picked him up. And another maybe linebacker we'll get to later on in today's video. Next up is one of the most notable names who did not get drafted this year. That was Carson Strong, the quarterback of Nevada. As a pure passer, he, you could make an argument he was, as, he was better than anyone else in this year's class. 70% completion percentage, awesome there. Over 4,000 yards, 36 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. He is the pocket passer there. I got a Tom Savage comp. I know why he went undrafted, and it's, it's unfortunate for Carson Strong. It's medical. He's got, and I'm going to try to pronounce it here, a medical condition call, called... Call, called Osteochondritis dysencans. It's a joint condition in which the bone underneath the cartilage dies due to lack of blood flow. It's pain. It hinders the joint motion as well. Was viewed as maybe career-threatening. Last year, before the season began, he had cadaver cartilage added to that knee. Scar tissue cleaned up in 2021. I think the medicals were a major red flag for Carson Strong. The Eagles ended up picking him up, gave him a pretty good signing bonus from what I've heard. So I'm happy for Carson Strong from that standpoint. And maybe if he stays healthy, he can be a, a decent NFL player for you in the end. Who is your number one undrafted free agency signing? This is going to be the pinned comments on today's video. So if the ad break happens to come here on YouTube, I want you guys to take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know who your number one pickup was. I'm going based on my big board. Donovan West was number four, 143 overall for me. This is a fantastic scheme fit, too. He's a bit of a divisive guy. I know that. Super young, though. Uh, he is a bit undersized. Is he a guard? Is he a center? There was a thumb injury that I know he had to get fixed that I don't think would have caused a medical concern. So I think I was just higher on Donovan West than other people were. Scheme fit-wise, as a zone blocker, he's great in this. He doesn't turn 21 until later, or just turned 21 in May, I should say. He's going to be a good fit for the Niners. Keep an eye out on Donovan West. Unfortunately, our number five player is not yet even signed. That is Justin Ross, the wide receiver out of Clemson, a bit of a shocker here. Back in 2018, Justin Ross looked like a future surefire Hall of Fame or first round pick. He looked that good. Then he was hurt in 2020. He missed the entire season due to what I believe to be a significant concern uh, on his neck, which is clearly, I think, why he is unsigned right now. Uh, he had con uh, fusion surgery on his neck. He missed all of the season. Had a stress fracture in his foot that required surgery in November 2021. He did not test well in the drills he did do. Didn't look the same guy coming back. I think medical is why Ross is unsigned. He was not the same guy after he got back from all those injuries, unfortunately. It's a huge red flag. And the fact he is still unsigned is shocking to me. 
That, that, that is like, wow, that's, that's unexpected there. And my fear is that that's how bad the medical actually is. And that, if that is the case, I am confused with how and why Clemson cleared him to return then. Because if Clemson cleared him, somebody should sign him, I would assume. So we'll wait and see there on Justin Ross. I hope he gets signed, assuming he is medically healthy. That's why I, I like the, the new uh, NLI stuff. Like, you get, you, he, he would have gotten paid. He was a first-round pick in 2018. Hasn't been the same guy. I'm heartbroken for Ross. If anyone signs him, who will it be? Let me know in the comments right now. Let's go to the Eagles. My number, I think, six run right now. Yeah, six overall player, or UDFA, I should say. Josh Job, this is this is medical. Uh, turf toe injury cost him. A, he was not the same guy trying to play through it. Had surgery on it back in December. I think that is why he is unsigned. You're hoping for Levi Wallace 2.0 right now with, with the Bama UDFA kid. Was way better in 2020, not as good in 2021. The messed up foot, I think, is a big reason why he did not get signed by anyone but the air, but wasn't drafted. Eagles, again, got themselves a good football player. Christopher Allen heading to the Denver Broncos. I will make note these are based on the reported signings. Sometimes some things do change. Possible sleeper. He also was coming off a rather lengthy injury list. Foot injury this year. Torn ACL in 2018. Fractured his right foot this year. When he did, when he did get around to testing, uh, he tested pretty well. He barely played football this year. He's a good pass rusher, though, when he's out there on the actual football field. Denver might have found themselves a gem if, if he can be healthy. The Tennessee Titans next up here at number eight overall, Jaden Peavy. Uh, there were some long-term durability red flags per Dane Brugler. Did not test uh, very well. I think he can be a, a early down run stopper at your three technique position. That's always a decent value pick for a UDFA. Again, I kind of think the medical is at play here. Manscaped has the best men's grooming products on the internet. In fact, the entire world. You can get yours today at manscaped.com slash chat. 20% off and free shipping on all their products, including the ultra premium collection. As you can see right here, I'm, I'm a little bit smelly because it's been a long day. So just... Squirt a little bit down in there. Everything feels a little bit better, a little bit brighter on that front. That's our body spray. You got deodorant, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, lip balm, 20% off, and free shipping at manscaped.com slash chat. The Jags at number nine, they get Kevin Austin. I like this one a lot here. Uh, there is a couple things here. Injuries and there were some off-the-field character stuff here. Spent it for all of 2019 uh, for undisclosed re uh, reasons. It was repeated team rules violations. I think there were some maturity concerns, too. Two surgeries on his left foot that caused him to miss all, almost all of 2020. Uh, fractured uh, pinky toe, and then he rushed back and broke the foot again. Two surgeries there. Good production this year. Tested really well. He's a boomer bust player. Had a fifth-round grade on him. Get him as a UDFA if you can... If the off-the-field medical stuff gets finalized, you'll be just fine. The Chiefs, hey, they had a good draft. Now picking up a good UDFA here. Mike Rose, linebacker out of Iowa State. Kind of a nickel box safety player. Good athletic traits. I think he's better in zone than he is man-to-man. -man. I, I think I was just a little bit higher on him. Oh, he doesn't tackle very well. He misses a lot of tackles. That's probably why he went as a UDFA. But... Great coverage production there. You can play some zone and I think uh, has some special teams value here as well. Did test well, and that always matters. Verone McKinley, who I know at least some of you guys are pretty high on. I, I understand, too. Highly, highly, highly intelligent person who's going to have a very successful career after football from that standpoint. Great ball production, right? Six interceptions, six PBUs. Time, you're going, how on earth did this player not get drafted? Uh, the athletic ability is simply not there. He's 5'11", 192, uh, a 4.6740-yard dash and a 7.123 cone are really bad athletic times. That took him off the board of a bunch of different play, uh, teams, so that's why he went as a UDFA. A couple of the opposing coaches called him dirty, but I think it was more that he was just a physical player uh, for me more than anything. Now, if you went nonstop NFL news, Rumors and everything else all off season, maybe some free agents best available and some 2023 NFL mock drafts come to the right spot. Hit that red button and subscribe right now.
Love this one by the Saints. Abram Smith, a battering ram running back out of Baylor. I am happy to see him signed. He's my number 12 overall player here. Not sure why he really went undrafted. I'm double-checking my notes here right now as we speak. Uh, torn ACLs in his background. I think I was just higher on him. Chris Ivory, athletically, I think is a good style of player here. Caleb Elby, I know why he went a as a UDFA. He, I am higher on him. In fact, he's technically a rookie minicamp invite uh, for Seattle. I simply liked him more than most. I saw some decent traits of being able to operate an offense. Uh, call him this year's Anthony Gordon for me, just a guy that I like more that the NFL did not. Safety Marquise Bell, who at Florida A&M is a special team stud. He's able to fly around, great straight line speed. Didn't play much special teams. The traits are there, I think, in terms of his NFL role. Did not play special teams, but has the traits for it, just to be clear on that front there. Uh, enrolled early at Maryland, got suspended, never played a game, ended up at, at Florida A&M. Loves to hit. Cowboys fans remember the Roy Williams great safety, north-south guy, best downhill. That's kind of my player comp for him. Now, who do you think? had the best undrafted free agency class. You can go full homer here. You have a cart plans to do so. You can just type your favorite team in if you want to. So let me know who you think has the best undrafted free agency class this year. Dare Rosenthal out of Kentucky, who began his career at LSU. Um, he, I thought, played okay uh, this past year for Kentucky. I think he went undrafted, A, because he's got to add some bulk. He's 6'6", six, six, almost 6'7", six, 290. It's really thin. He was always in the doghouse at LSU, and I am wondering if coaches did not give him rave reviews. I am surprised. Uh, so that means maybe there's some unknown medical, too, but the off the field was a red flag going in. All right, the Bengals at number 16, Ben Brown, the center. He missed most of the pre-draft process uh, because of a torn biceps, tended needed surgery. I had a fifth, sixth-round grade for him. He is a different guy than the other centers. This is more of the bigger guy at 6'5", 312. Some right guard reps as well. I would not be surprised if Ben, Br ben Brown ended up making the Bengals roster, maybe over a guy like Trey Hill, who was late-round pick last year out of Georgia. Haskell Garrett out of Ohio State. Um, there were some, per Dane Brugler, some immaturity stuff in the past that might have been a red flag. He's just not a great athlete. I think that's why Haskell Garrett went unsigned. I have a sixth-round grade on him. All these guys, by the way, just barely cracked my top 200 uh, in the end. Garrett is a three technique who doesn't offer you much burst and juice, so that's a bit of a tricky sell for a lot of teams. Which player do you think going undrafted was the biggest surprise? I mean, I'm going to put Kellen Dish, he's my number one guy. Carson Strong and Justin Ross are notable names, but at least you have the medical explanations there. Well, I want to hear from you. Which player were you most surprised that didn't get signed in this year's class? Or didn't get drafted in this year's class, excuse me. Let's go to number 18, Tyler Goodson, the Green Bay Packers. I like him more. Uh, than most people, I also wanted to like him more uh, than I did. The film was not the best. He didn't get touchdowns very often. One TD run in his final 10 games this year. He's got a great spin move. He tested really well. I think there is some sleeper upside for Goodson, specifically in a good scheme fit like he is in, in a zone ru uh, runner in Green Bay. But you only average 4.5 yards per carry. You're going to be a tough sell for a lot of teams to draft you, but it's a good UDFA pickup. Another elite name alert, Smoke Monday out of Auburn. His first name is really Quindarius, but that's also a pretty baller name right there. Uh, only okay agility. Um, I had a six-round grade. I don't think he has elite athletic traits on film either. Better as a strong safety. Saints pick him up. I like that one a lot. Two Saints uh, pickups on my list here, top 20. There are also two Colts pickups. Another safety slash linebacker from my alma mater, Sterling Weatherford, who athletically tested a lot like Kyle Hamilton. Also, Kaiser White. This is a good scheme fit for what the Colts are going to be trying to be doing here on defense. He was a, you know, safety slash receiver. Got some basketball background as well. He was a safety for Miami. He might move to linebacker, kind of like Divine Diablo did for the Raiders last year. He is a tweener. The film was not nearly as smooth or as impressive, so I understand why Weatherford uh, went as a UDFA. I knew I was going to be higher on him, but I like that one a lot. Now, we went through 20, and there are, you know, you do about 10 per team, 15 per team. We're talking about, like, 
300, 400, 500 UDFA. So I left off a lot of names. If you've got other ones, let me know who you like in the comments section right now.